Apparently, Gamergate is doomed to failure. Doomed. The reason Gamergate is doomed to failure, believe it or not, is not necessarily due to their PR image. Such an American introduction. So fucking American. Mmm. Gotta get that American testosterone in your body. If they manage to somehow clean that up, and divorce themselves from all the harassment that has gone on, they're still doomed to failure. Mainly because of the hardcore gamers that supposedly make up Gamergate itself. I really love it on how you picked that one picture from South Park to represent those hardcore gamers, you know, those fat, lazy fucktards! Now that might seem counterintuitive, but bear with me for a minute. First and foremost, game studios are a business. And they will do whatever drives sales the most and makes the most money. So what will happen if they start making games with more female player characters and less use of women as set dressing, so to speak? Well, nothing, because most people who play video games don't really care about their main characters. If they can customize the characters, they, they can customize it wherever the fuck they want. May it be male or female, or even non-identifiable. And if it's a female character, they don't really care on breast size, on how the person looks. What matters is the gameplay. But only people like yourself focus on that more than the gameplay itself. Well, it might attract more sales. Women are an undeniable fast-growing segment of the market. Most women that play video games often play video games that do not contain a protagonist, such as puzzle games and card games. Or there is a protagonist, however your gender is never mentioned, where you are on who you are, such as Plants vs. Zombies, which is one of my favorite games. The protagonist, which is you, must plant the plants and fend off zombies. So for them not to try and appeal to them, it just makes bad business sense. What exactly are you trying to say? That Gamergate is against the ideology of women being protagonists or women actually playing video games? Because if that's what you're thinking, then you're pretty much just strawmanning the living hell out of Gamergate. Now, Gamergate always argues that the hardcore gamer is what makes up the bulk of their sales. No, you don't. Studios target the middle group between the hardcore gamers and the casual gamers. And the reason why is simple. Number one, there's more of them than either of the other two sides. And two, the hardcore gamers are going to buy the games regardless. So what does this have to do with anything? Because last time I checked, this is a consumer revolt, not a anti-women brigade. Now, to make a financial impact, you have to boycott the games from the companies that agree to make more female characters and create a big enough loss for that company to notice. Again, what does this have to do with Gamergate? Now, this does not mean hurting the sales of some obscure game that the mainstream has never even heard of. You would have to affect the sales of a major franchise like Call of Duty or Halo, etc. And it would have to be readily apparent that the cause of the sales loss was due to your boycott. You must be really fucking stupid! Because last time I checked, Gamer Gators are not against the ideology of women in video games. They're not against that shit. There are plenty of gamer gators who are female for fuck's sakes. I mean, what sort of jackass would boycott a game just solely based on the character's gender? Because I haven't seen anyone like that. Nope, not even one. I mean, there's probably some jackass that's gonna stop playing video games because, oh my god, the main character has boobs! Boobs, I tell ya! And that's not gonna happen. Because I can tell you, the hardcore gamer is not gonna pass up the hot new game for a political statement. Well, of course fucking not! Because most people who play video games do not care on what the protagonist looks like. It doesn't matter on what's between their fucking legs. May it be a fucking vagina or a penis! Now, for an example of this working like it's supposed to, even though this was not an organized boycott, uh, but here's the principle in play. Look what happened just prior to Microsoft's uh, launch of the Xbox One. No one liked the things that Microsoft was proposing to do, like the constant connection to the Internet, the no sh uh, sharing or trading of games, etc. 
and as it got closer and closer to launch, it became readily apparent that those things were going to have a drastic negative effect on sales, especially after PlayStation got massive positive reception at, I believe it was E3, for mocking Microsoft's policies, which were still in effect at the time. So Microsoft removed them. It still hurt their sales, partially due to the forced inclusion of Kinect, which made it a higher price than the PS4, but also partially due to continuing resentment that they were going to do that in the first place. So how much has Gamergate hurt sales? Not advertisers on websites. Game sales. You know, this entire video is just one big fucking straw man. I could just say, this is a straw man. This is a straw man. This is a fucking straw man. I don't need to explain any further that this entire fucking video is basically the ideology that Gamergate is anti-women, that they're trying to hurt video games rather than actually focusing on what they've been talking about the entire fucking time. Ethics in journalism. Not a lot, if at all. For a recent topic, Obsidian and the Pillars of Eternity, the joke that's on the tombstone. Now, if Obsidian removes that joke, will Gamergate boycott them? And will it do well enough to hurt sales? Probably not. In fact, they probably already have the game bought, so it wouldn't hurt them to go ahead and remove it. And this is why you'll fail. Game studios have nothing to lose. Say that about Tim Shafir, who uh, apparently decided to mock Not Your Shield by creating a sock puppet and uh, basically mocking Not Your Shield by saying that women and minorities of Not Your Shield do not exist. And that made a lot of fucking people so freaking angry. When more video game companies do that sort of shit, I guarantee you, you're gonna lose a lot of fucking respect. By adding more female player characters and being more sensitive to how their, uh, the non-player characters are used, they just have more to gain because... The only, down, uh, only downside is things will stay exactly as it is. The upside is they will gain more sales. Which, believe me, no matter how much money they are making in sales, they always want more. And that's why you will always be doomed to failure. You are a complete and utter fucking moron. That, that's all I have to say. This entire video is nothing more than a big fat straw man. In fact... This is such a big fat fucking straw man that you're creating a fucking straw planet. You know, a straw planet filled with straw cities and, you know, filled with straw men. A strawception, if you will. Now, this is normally where I end the video, but there's more. What exactly is Gamergate afraid of? Well, they certainly seem to be scared shitless of Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, and Brianna Wu. Scared or just plain outright annoyed of people like yourself spreading a whole ton of shit on the internet. You wonder why? None of these women have ever said they wanted to take their games away. You know what the funny thing is that Brianna Wu tweeted to Lionhead Studios about their picture they uploaded on National Cleavage Day saying that she got offended and she demanded an apology. You know, and you know Lionhead... Studio took the picture down and apologized to Brianna Wu and the rest of her Twitter fans. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to believe that you're not trying to take away our fucking video games, but you have no problem dictating on what sort of art that people can upload on the fucking internet. I mean, holy fucking shit. This isn't the first time this happened. This actually happened twice now. I mean, no, not twice, three times. Um, one about Spider-Woman's butt. And another one about a uh, Batgirl being quote unquote raped by the Joker. Oh, 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 oh. oh shit. Which is the argument of a petulant three year old, not a rational adult. At least one would hope. Look yourself in the fucking mirror, pal. All they've ever asked for is more options. More options for there to be female player characters that aren't just tacked on as an afterthought. How much more freedom can you get than having customizable characters? 
like in Mass Effect or Fantasy Star Universe, which, by the way, is one of my favorite games of all time on the PS2. And to be a little more sensitive to the way women are portrayed. Why the fuck do we need to be more sensitive to groups of people who get offended by just about anything? What would happen if game companies did that? What would happen is game companies would make more games with more options for female player characters and they'd be a little more sensitive to the way women are portrayed. And by that you mean you want these companies to create these women that fits your tiny little agenda to make this small minority feel fucking special. You know, uh, if the woman's too sexy, it's sexist. If the woman's too feminine, it's sexist. If the woman's too masculine, it's sexist. Just about anything too of that is sexist. Now, why do I think that is all that would happen and the world wouldn't collapse into some kind of post-apocalyptic anarchy? You would love that, wouldn't you? Well, here's one perfect example. Marvel Comics introduced a new Thor who happened to be a woman. Now, when this was announced, it sent the comic bros on the internet into an apoplectic fit, much the way Gamergate behaves. Ha 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 fuck you! And that this would be the end of everything as we know it. A fictional male character was replaced with a fictional female character. How in the hell could the world cope with such an atrocity? Well, pretty well, actually. The new female Thor is way outselling the old. I do recall that Monday Matt expressed his anger about why it's a bad idea to change Thor into a female. Me, personally, I didn't really care much because I'm not a comic book fan. But I will link to the description about Monday Matt's response about female Thor. I mean, by 20,000 copies a month more than the old male Thor. And that's exactly the same kind of thing that would happen in gaming if game companies did the same kind of thing. No, they fucking don't, because guess what? They do not care on what the protagonist looks like. If it's a female, they will just shrug it off and play the fucking game. As long as the character is good and the gameplay is fluid, then guess what? They have no problem on what the character's gender is. What do you think people play Tomb Raider for? Because it's a woman? No! Because they want to play a good fucking game. But rest assured, Gamergate would still be pouting in their little corner. But you know what they say, only weak men are intimidated by strong women. And only a dumbass like yourself was straw man the living hell out of Gamergate. You are a fucking dumbass! I am the atheist gamer! Peace the game out!